In today's video, we're going to continue to discuss and talk about dealing and overcoming worry, uh, part two. Uh, last time we started with it, and I just want to remind you, if you haven't watched that video of part one of this series, uh, John 16, uh, Jesus said, In me you may have peace. Peace is ultimately what we're looking for. You know, we're all searching for internal peace. That there's no tension, no anxiety, no fear. Uh, and we have to realize that comes only from this one source in me. Uh, this is, that's, that's the goal of enjoying relationship with God is to walk in peace, to walk in rest. Uh, but why do we deal with worry so often? How do we, how, how, I mean, is it possible to really overcome uh, worry even in the midst of uh, circumstances that we don't know are going to happen or maybe the ones that you're presently facing? I mean, I'm sure you can come up with uh, and tell me, Justin, my dad's going through this. Uh, we're going through this as a, a, a marriage relationship. My kids are this and uh, this job situation didn't play out. And so you can give me a long list of things that uh, you're worried about, things that are weighing you down. So, and this is why I'm doing this video. Uh, I'm not an expert at this. Um, Worry certainly is no longer a struggle in my life. It, things do not consume my mind because of the things that I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, but by no means do I have it all together. And by no means do I uh, stand here as an expert uh, telling you, um, stop worrying. I want to show you why we should stop and to how do you deal with the things that come at us. Uh, the enemy ultimately... He wants, he wants our attention. He wants you to be fixated on what he is stirring up inside of your life. He wants to get your attention off of God. He wants to get your attention off of the Word of God, off of the promises of God, and onto your circumstances or onto yourself. He wants you to be consumed with what you're going through, to feel sorry for what you're facing and how unfair it is of what you're, you're, you're having to endure through and how could God allow this if, if you're a son of God and He loves you. And so He wants your attention. He's after it. If He can get you to hold on to something that does not belong to you, which is the cares of life, He can ultimately get worry inside of your system. As I often like to say it like this, that, you know, it's circumstance-minded versus shepherd-minded. Are you one that is fixated and has given your attention to the circumstances of life, or have you learned how to become shepherd-minded, which we're going to go to in just a moment of what that is. But circumstance-minded means that you are picking up or holding on to cares. Um, or cares are from circumstance. So you face off with a circumstance, something that you did not expect, something that has gone adverse to what you were believing for or hoping for, that is a care now that is inside of your world. The question is, will you carry it or will you cast it? What will you do with the care that comes? When you're shepherd-minded, he teaches us and shows us how to cast. When you're circumstance-minded, you carry that care. You hold on to something for too long, a weight that does not belong to you. You hold on to it. You embrace it. You ultimately become whatever that circumstance is. You start to spread it to others and you stubbornly hold on to this care more than His promise. You struggle to hear people talk positively because ultimately this care has weighted you down. And it causes anxiety, it causes fatigue, and it causes fear. And you start to now live life as a believer from that place carrying these weights. Now imagine how many of these we pick up over the course of our life. You can, you can see why. There is physical pain, 
there's mental torment people are weighed down they can't seem to experience joy or peace or rest why because they've consistently carried the cares of this life um, before we get into cast what that looks like and what that means uh, Hebrews 12 1 talks about us running a race and it says that we are to lay aside every weight the weight are these cares that we are carrying these are the weights that we have to let go of you have to let go of worrying about your past or worrying about what this person has done or not done worrying about how this is going to turn out for your good and so we are to lay aside every weight rather than carry it uh, why because it ensnares us the bible says it ensnares us that that word ensnare is like a, it's, it's a trap it catches us by the leg and it doesn't it injures us and if we get free it doesn't let us run the race that we call to effectively and we do that so that we can run with endurance you see if you're going to run this race that god has called you to run it's vital that we learn how to what cast our care and this comes from he um first peter chapter 5 verse number 7 that we are to cast our care to god uh, for he cares for us what does that word cast look like it means to throw or to hurl suddenly and completely uh, just recently um, i was sitting and out of nowhere have no clue where it came from uh, I was just in a parking lot, a cockroach fell into my lap. Boy, when I saw that thing, I, I jumped, I threw, I hurled suddenly and completely. I dealt with it as though it does not belong anywhere around me or by my car. I have no clue how it got there, um, but my, my action of that taught me something of what it means to cast a care. Many of us just kind of, we hold on to it, we, we embrace it, we, we start to uh, become it, we spread it with our words, and we stubbornly refuse to let go of it. Uh, you do not do that with a care. You have to throw, hurl, suddenly, completely. And where do you do it? Onto God, and it cannot be timidly. Like, oh God, take this. No, many of us, we give maybe part of it to God, but cast means to throw, hurl, get it off of you because it does not belong into your world. Okay, so shepherd-minded versus circumstances. So circumstance-minded, it leads to a bunch of cares that we carry um, and those things hold us down. Shepherd-minded, uh, how do you know when you're there? It starts to lead to a place, what I call rest. Rest is just simply that you're unmoved. You're in total peace in the midst of your circumstance. Think about this, when Jesus was sleeping in the boat, the disciples were circumstance-minded, picked up a care real quick, started to carry it. It led to, we are going to what? Die. Out of fear, they woke up the shepherd, and the shepherd was what? He was sleeping. And he said to them, he rebuked them for their unbelief and for their faith. And of course, he rebuked the waters. But he was at a place of rest. He was unmoved and in total peace regarding the circumstances that he was in. Why? Isaiah 26, 3 says, And you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. And so I want you to see that the peace that you're looking for comes from attention. And that is one of the ways of actually casting your care is to keep your attention onto the shepherd. We deal with the shepherd. I remember there was one time where I was struggling with worry and the Lord began to say, Justin, bring yourself to me before you bring your circumstance to me. And that was a way of teaching me, Justin, let me give you a different perspective so that you can get rid of this care that you're holding on to. And so he dealt with me before he dealt with the circumstance. And many times we want to bring our circumstance to God when in fact he's wanting to us, uh, uh, he wants us to bring ourselves to him. So dealing with and overcoming worry. I hope you begin to understand 
where it begins and how you begin to deal with it. Because at the end of the day, it's about becoming shepherd minded rather than circumstance minded. And when you can get to that place, you start to realize this is where it begins. And remember what Jesus said about rest. He said, all those who are heavy laden, um, at Matthew chapter 11, all those who are heavy laden and burdened, come to me and I will give you rest. It's something that you must receive in exchange for something that you must give. You cast your care and you receive rest. And that's how you begin to become a person who no longer is struggling with worry. I hope this helps you. I know there's a lot that we unpacked, but may God speak your, my, speak your language to you and translate what I said into your spirit. Have a great day. Thank you for listening and thank you for sharing. Bye-bye.